All right, how's it going? We're back here at Team O'Neill Rally School. We've got Pascal Belperon, who is our lead motorsports engineer. Si, senor. Uh, and what we're going to talk about is weight reduction. Uh, because we've had a good amount of questions. What do we do to make some of these cars lighter? And when you pull in kind of a uh, normal stock production vehicle and want to do a rally car, you want to do the roll cage, what are kind of the easiest things to get rid of as far as weight? So easiest things are going to be the big stuff, interior items that you're going to take up anyway to be able to fit the roll cage and the competition seats and all that stuff. So we're going to get over to some weight with taking out the rear seat and front seats. Um, you can oftentimes lighten up parts of the dashboard, all the carpets and stuff like that. That's kind of your easy stuff right off the bat. The general kind of the heavy things, all of the speakers and airbags and just all of the general car things that you don't need in a race car. Um, but we go a little bit further than that and I've seen some people go really crazy as far as you know making a race car like this lighter and lighter. Uh, so what's the difference maybe with what you guys are doing versus what I would do if I built this thing in my garage? Certainly. So uh, once you get it down to the bare shell, there's a lot of extra brackets and panels that you don't necessarily need to have the car work as a rally car. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of added weight that you could potentially take out. Uh, it's relatively easy to do. A lot of it can be done with a spot weld cutter. And I'll show you guys a little bit how that works. Uh, but just basically removing steel panels that are no longer needed. There's a lot of stuff that's used to mount seats or interior items that you're not going to need in the rally car. Alright, so we've got a couple different types of tools that we can use for drilling out the spot welds. Uh, the first one is this slightly higher quality cutting bit. Uh, it's got a drill bit in the center that's spring loaded so that as you're pushing down and drilling you're not going to actually drill through in the center and then the cutter is going to cut away the spot weld just at the edge of it so that once it's all the way through the upper panel that panel will pop off uh, once the spot weld's no longer holding it. They also make some different types of cutters. Uh, these are a little uh, more affordable but they don't cut quite as well. Sometimes I like to use these if I'm in a spot where it's hard to get the drill straight and I'm pretty sure I'm going to probably break the bit. Uh, I'll use the cheaper ones in those areas uh, but these do qu cut quite a bit faster. What I'll do is just take a regular drill and uh, drill a little, little pilot on the uh, in the center of the spot weld and use that to help me center the, the cutting bit. Like that. This one's really dull. It's not helping. And then you've got your piece out. So the spot welds have been drilled out in the center, and then I've just got left a little bit of the original weld there to hit with a grinder to flatten that out. Um, and then you're done. And the length at which you go taking those out is going to be dependent on how much time you have, how much money you have if you're paying someone else to do the work for you. Um, but it's relatively inexpensive way to, to lose weight. How do you decide which body panels to remove and which ones to keep? So, some of it is going to be looking at the car and deciding what do I need to leave to have it be strong and stiff enough 
to work as a rental car. Um, and then some of it is going to come down to time and cost. So there's certain panels like in this B pillar or even more so in the C pillar. There's uh, layers inside of this or maybe the inner layer that you don't necessarily need to have there. You could take it out, but it's fairly integrated into the shell. So it's going to take some time to get those pieces out, um, which if you're doing the work yourself, that's if you have the time to do it or if you're paying someone, do you have the money to spend on the labor to do that? Yeah, because most of these unibody cars are basically just sandwiched pieces of stamped steel that are spot welded together. So by cutting these spot welds, you can take layers out of the sandwich and then rebuild the sandwich too. Yep. Yeah, you can either do sort of the inner layers that you can just take off. One thing you run into is a lot of times various layers are large pieces, like this outer skin is one piece for the whole size of this car. Yeah. Um, so that would be kind of difficult to remove as a section. But some of the inner layers are more modular and you could potentially take those out. Um, obviously you want to consider the, the safety aspect of it as well. So even something like the A pillar or the B pillar as well, um, in the event that you crash the rally car, those can do a lot in addition to the roll cage as far as keeping it safe. Now say I didn't have maybe all of that time or experience to know sort of which ones might be safe to remove, but I knew some obvious spots like the back of the car here, I could get some more weight out of it. Is there a quicker, easier ways to do it? Yep, so instead of removing whole panels, uh, easy way you could go out with like a hole stuff and just drill a bunch of holes, kind of make it look like Swiss cheese. Uh, so you'd be lightening up the panels, but without actually having the time and effort into removing the entire piece. I know, I know one of the things, from building a few rally cars that can be a huge pain in the butt is um, all of this sound deadening. So some cars have, you know, thick undercoating underneath and some of them have like glued on rubber mats inside on the floors and even on the ceiling. Yep. Yeah, so you'll have a lot of stuff that's used to keep the noise down inside a road car. Uh, it adds up to quite a bit of weight if you can get rid of all of it. And there's a few different ways you can go about getting rid of that stuff. Um, you can kind of do it mechanically, scraping it using wire wheels, stuff like that. Some of it responds really well to heating it up and then scraping it off. If you can kind of get the adhesive that's used um, to a certain temperature, it'll come up fairly easy. Uh, the other way to do it is to cool stuff down with either dry ice, or if you want to get real extreme, you can use liquid nitrogen. Uh, you can actually cool it down to a point where you can hit it and it'll crack and come off really easily. Freeze the rubber matting in hopes of cracking it and having it released from the metal? Exactly, yeah. So, one of the best ways I found to remove some of the seam sealer, which would be this white stuff here, which is just used to keep stuff, uh, water and other stuff from getting down in between the different seams, is these non-knotted wire wheels. Uh, do a really good job of tearing that stuff out. It goes a lot faster than trying to scrape it by hand or, or heat it or anything else. Um, the wires in this being non-knotted tend to come out, so I'd recommend a full face shield instead of just safety glasses. And then we'll show you kind of how that works on a little section back here. talking about building a lightweight race car. What options are there for roll cages and uh, rollover protection? So in this car, we've got a cage that we built in-house to FIA specifications. Um, so that's got a certain spec of tubing size and wall thickness. Uh, a lot of times you can go with a homologated cage kit, which can be made lighter through the use of smaller diameter and thinner wall thickness tubes. Um, so that's an option for a lighter cage. The other thing too is, is depending on the type of racing you're doing, uh, is there's bars that maybe are 
considered optional in the regulations. So there's stuff like in this case, this bar here isn't required in the safety regulations, but we like to add it from a strength and stiffness standpoint. Yeah, it goes back to your shock towers. Mm -hmm. trying a lot of that. Yeah. Neat. Um, the, the last thing I've, I've heard of, and it might have been in the old days of either drag racing or stock car racing, but um, acid dipping the whole shell. Yep, yeah, that is something you could do. That's going to get rid of all of the paint, seam sealers paint and, and body paint coating. So it would leave you with just the steel. And then um, I've also heard of people you leave it in the acid longer and it will actually make the panels thinner. Because of away of the metal. how many gallons of paint are probably on this car? It's a good question. <laughs> but probably quite a bit because there's, there's yeah. several layers of coatings as well. Yeah, yeah. if you've ever picked up a gallon of paint, does that? It does certainly add yeah, that. So one, one thing you want to be careful of, especially in a, a rally car, is uh, you start removing all of the coatings. You're going to take this car out in the rain and mud. At winter events, you're going to drive it on the road where there's maybe salt. You can start running run into issues with rust because you've got now bare steel inside of all of these structures that has no coating on it. It's going to rust a lot faster. Once, once you guys are done with this chassis and, and you're pretty happy with it, Tell me a little bit quickly about doors and trunk lids and hoods and that sort of thing. So uh, doors, we will leave essentially standard. We'll take the panel off and replace that to fit inside the roll cage. Uh, but we're gonna leave the door structure, the crash bars and stuff in the front doors. Yep. Um, that is a requirement in the regulations. So there's side impact bars essentially yep. in all modern car doors. Yeah. And that this has to be kept. A side impact is kind of a vulnerable area. You don't have a lot of space there for crush, so it help, does help to leave those in. Um, the rear doors uh, for this, we'll take out some of the window regulators and stuff, but we'll leave the crash bar. I see, you know, a lot of people in different kinds of racing are big on black sand windows. You know, why is that an option? That would be an option. Uh, cost is probably the, the biggest thing. Yeah. It's, it's an easy place to just leave it with what it comes with and save a little bit of money. Yeah. Uh, but certainly also an option to lose some weight in the, the rear glass, especially. The front windows, it's something to consider. It is nice to have windows in a rally car that go up and down. Yeah. Uh, but certainly you can save some weight with some Lexan windows. Yeah, Lexan, from my small experience of working with it, the, the windows that I've done out of Lexan seem to always leak, probably mm -hmm. because of how I did it. Um, and also, they're impossible to just sort of wipe off and keep clean. They scratch up, you know, like this thing. Uh, they get really scratched up and just kind of crappy looking after not very long. Yeah, uh, it's kind of something that you gotta, it's never gonna last like glass wood. It's yeah. just not as hard a material. Yeah. Um, hoods? You could take out a lot of the structure of the hood. It's not something you necessarily need. Uh, and just have sort of a steel skin that's really lightweight or you could go to a different material, yeah. like carbon or something like that. Um, that's something you could also do, not on the front doors, but on the trunk lid and the, the yeah. rear doors, you could do those out of carbon. You'll see some cars will even go, like um, the rear core panels could be made out of carbon. The more production-based classes are gonna require you to keep more of the stock body panels. Um, but in the open classes, you're gonna need to keep the front doors stock, the roof is going to need to remain the OEM material, which I mean steel, but the rest of the stuff is pretty free to change. So if you want carbon or, or aluminum fenders, glass, you, know, you can graft in sections of the rear quarter panels, rear doors, all that stuff can be changed out. All right, cool. Well, thanks, Pascal, for taking us through this car. Um, if you guys have any questions out there for Pascal and some of the race cars, as this car uh, is being built. It's easy enough for us to stop by and ask some more questions. So add them in the comment section. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for watching.